Man, if you didn't know it, God is good all the time. Man, whoever told you it take a house full to make it rock, they didn't tell you the truth. Because, man, we ain't got but about seven or eight of us in here right now. And let me tell you, God is right here in our midst. He said in his word, he said, well, two or three are gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing on anything. He said, there am I in the midst of them. So we can assure that just as we are here today, God is here with us. Amen. Man, I done got happy. God is good. God is good. Not just some of the time, but he's good all the time. He's good all the time. We'd like to welcome you here to the Sweetwater Church of Christ here on this afternoon. Um, we know here across the country, uh, members, preachers of the Churches of Christ are joining together here on today, giving messages of hope to the people of God um, as we are going through some troublesome times that we do not know what the result of it shall be. But we do know that in spite of, God is good all the time. And I had, you'd have to forgive me, I had prepared one message for today and I had advertisements and everything made for it. But let me tell you, when God wants you to go a different way, you just got to go where God would have you to go. Amen. Amen. So I have a word for you on today. Prayerfully, it will be clear and concise to someone that is seeking a word from the Lord. If you have your copy of the word of God, follow me to the, God, the book of Mark. The gospel according to Matthew, my, my bad, Matthew, Matthew. Mark must be talking about me, whoever he is. The gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number two. And we're going to begin at verse number one, and we're going to read down to verse number 12. The grass withers, and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Bible reads, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of Jews? For we saw him star at its rising and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Christ would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, because of out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way and there it was, the star they had seen at his rising. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. May the word of the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy and his divine word. I want to give for a message on tonight, God me O, thy great Jehovah. God me O, thy great Jehovah. I want you to focus not necessarily on the birth of Christ because this could easily be a Christmas message. As splendorous and as wondrous as his birth was, not so much on his swaddling clothes and, and the manger and all the imagery and the messages that are drawn from the understanding that the king of glory chose purposely to be born in a barn. Wrapped not in the fine designer clothes. They didn't have Gucci and Versace back then. He didn't have none of that. But he was in a dirty 
rags. He came into this world and with and none of the milk and the rags and the stench thereof could stop the glory of his coming and his splendorous grace. He understood who he was and he was not defined by what he wore. He was not defined by who he was not defined by where he lived. He was defined by the inner treasures that were buried down in his soul. And I want you to focus this tonight on the magi, the, the wise men and, and the whole process whereby they came to find the baby Jesus. And, and they are guided. And, and, and when you have the guidance of the Lord in your life, it is the kind of guidance that, that is as sure as an anchor for your soul. And if you will understand this, you did not have to get where you was by yourself. I know you thought it was because of your accolades and everything that you had to work for and did, but you did not get where you are by yourself, that you have not been guided all of your life by your own knowledge and by your own wisdom. When we hear scriptures like the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Sometimes we hear them, but we don't think them. I said sometimes we hear them, but we don't think them. You have to think those scriptures and understand that your steps have been ordained and are ordained by God. Not just the good ones, but the other ones as well. You, you, we, you know, we shout and we say that God ordered my step when something wonderful happens in your life. And, and, and you want to give God praise when, when, when things are going well. But what about when you took a misstep? What, what about when you done tripped up every now and then? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, even if the good man is going through a bad place. Oh, oh, oh this is what Job said. The Lord knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. And, and at that point, Job was broke. And Joel was down and out. His children were dead and everything was going crazy. His property had been taken away from him. His house had been burned down to the ground. And Job said, God knows where I'm at. God saw the situation before it ever arrived. God saw the trouble coming. And just as God saw the trouble coming, God has provided a way for me to get out of the trouble. I'm so glad that trouble does not last always. I'm so glad that just as sure as a storm arises in my life, after a while, it got to get up out of here. You remember after the flood, God put a rainbow in the sky. And let me tell you, at the end of everything, we can be assured that God is going to take care of us. His house was burned down. Job said, God knows exactly where I'm at. God knows me not just in my good times, but God knows me in my bad times. God knows me in my uprising. God knows me in my downsetting. He knows my financial situation. He knows what's going on in my house. God knows what's going on in your emotions. He knows what's going on in your heart. He knows the turbulence that's going on in your body and, and with your children. He knows what's going on in your neighborhood and in your family. He knows how you feel in your flesh and how you feel in your heart. He knows what's going on in your family and in your situation. He knows what's happening on your job and in your career. He knows what's going on in the church. God knows everything. And if he guided you into it, the same God will guide you out of it. Now, now, now what, what a wonderful thing it is to be guided by the Lord. To understand that our coming in and our going out is determined by the Lord. No wonder the Bible says that I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my going out, and I'm blessed in my coming in. Blessed, blessed when I'm coming out. Blessed when I'm coming in. He says, I am blessed. I'm blessed when I'm good. I'm blessed when I don't feel good. I'm blessed with corona. I'm blessed with our corona. Whatever is going on, God said, guess what? I'm blessed. Because guess what, man? Whatever we got going on, we can always look around and find somebody that got some a little bit worse than we have. So in spite of it, we can say, Lord, I thank you that my trouble and it's bad as the next person, I am blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Paul said something. Paul said, I know how to abase. 
and I know how to abound. Paul says, I, 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 I know how to have, and I know how to be a have not every now and then. Because I know who God is. He said, he said, I don't mean that. I, he said, I don't mean that I just know about God. Paul says, I've experienced the goodness of God in my own life. That's how I'm able to tell you about what God is able to do. He says, I know God will speak to you and tell you to be still when you got to go forward and when to hush and when to hold your peace and wait on me and trust in me and use a little patience every now and then. Any of y'all ever tried to rush God? I, I know I'm talking to myself. Any of y'all ever tried to ever tried to rush God or, or get in a hurry with God? Be still and know that I am God. Don't move to the left. Don't move to the right. Just be still and know that your steps have already been ordered by God. All the stuff that we have breaking loose in our own life. But if we still have a twinkling, an ounce of something on the inside of us that still believes in the power of God, let me tell you, you can make it through some stuff. Any of y'all ever been at your wits end between a rock and a hard place, didn't have no hope, didn't have no joy, didn't have nothing to depend on, didn't have nothing to look on for, but you found just a little bit of something on the inside of you, a little bit of something that said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his places shall continually be in my mouth. A a little bit of something on the inside of you that said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a see begging for bread. A little bit of something on the inside of you that said, I will lift my eyes unto the year from which to come my help. My help coming from the Lord. John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And the word was with God. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. I don't care how dark things might be. It will never swallow up the light of God. I don't care how dark it may be. It will never swallow up or consume the light of God. It will never be able to do it. God will get you light in a hospital. God will get you light in an unemployment line. I, I ain't talking to nobody. God will get you light no matter how dark it is. There's still enough to be guided. Whenever you feel like there ain't nothing else can be done, God say, hey, I'm just getting started. Praise God for the light. The God in light. The, my great-grandmama, she sang that old song. She said, God, me, oh, thou. Great Jehovah. Y'all remember that song before y'all came over here. Y'all y'all remember that song? He said, y'all remember that song? Now, nah, now. Nah. He said something. You remember what he, pro, what he told the prophet? He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. He said, I knew you. He said, before I formed thee, I knew thee. I ordained thee. I sanctified thee to be a prophet unto the nation. You didn't just happen. You were not an accident. That's why you couldn't have been a miscarriage. That's why you couldn't have been a stillborn. God said you were not an accident. You were not an incident. You were born, not born by happenstance. You were not the result of a mistake. Whether your mother raised you or not, whether you met your daddy or you didn't meet your daddy, whether you know who he is or not, whatever you went through, you were not made by accident. Don't ever feel like you are an accident or you were made by an accident. God said, I planned you. I purposed you. I created you. I formed you and I ordained you. And guess what? Since I did all that, I'm guiding you. I'm guiding you. Step by step. Step by step. But you got to be on the right course. You got to stay the course. You, you got to stay on the course with God. You know how easy it is to get out of your line? And now, I know y'all ain't never, any of y'all ever been riding in your car and you get to a stoplight, and for some reason or another, we just feel like we got to just look over <laughs> and, see, and see what the other person, maybe they got some loud music or something, and you just look at them, man, what they thumping, what they got going on over there. And before you know it, everybody else done took off, and your light green, and you still sitting there? Because you all in everybody else's lane and don't know what's going on in your own lane. <laughs> God guides us. I want, to, I want to speak to somebody this afternoon 
who has always had a feeling that you were guided. I, I, I know as long as God is in my life, my steps are going to be ordered. And, you know, sometimes we ask God, Lord, order my steps. Lord, order my steps. Then when it's time for us to walk, we act like we got locked on our feet. We don't want to move. We, we, we just stubborn. Like we just stuck in place. Like we can't do anything. And, and, and there's a whole lot of places you know that you could have been right now. Whole lot of things that you could have been doing by now. But every time you got in the wrong place, something just kind of drew you out of it. It ever been in some bad circumstances. That you don't know how, but some just got you out of that situation. It wasn't by accident, let me tell you. It wasn't because of your good looks and it wasn't because of your money. It was because God was guiding you. He drew you away from people that you thought you loved, but they didn't love you. Oh, oh, oh we don't want to mess with that. Now, you, you, you wanna, we don't want to mess with that. He drew us away from some people that we thought that we couldn't do without. Sometimes we don't know it until they're out of our life. We're left with the fact that the only person that we really need in our life is God. Because can y'all, have any of y'all ever found out about that at the end of the day, everybody you can count, you can't count on. <laughs> everybody that you see, you can't count them in because who's with you today while everything is good? Oh, when, when some stuff hit the fan tomorrow, they might not be around. But we can praise God that every now and then, when things are looking crazy to us, even right now in the world that we're living in, children of God can hold your head up high and say, my steps have been ordered by God. He knows the way that we take. So guess what? When you took a misstep, God saw you. When you took a back step, God saw you. When you tripped up and thought didn't nobody see you, guess what? God saw you. And guess what? Everything that we go through in this life is counting towards something. Everything that you go through in this life, you learn something from it. Either you can't get anything else out of the situation, you can say it was a learning situation for me. I took something out of it. And every test that we experience in this life, it is something for us to learn. Because guess what? You, you think you got it bad in this chapter of your life, and you stand and ask, oh, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, I want to go to the next level. Lord, I'm all in. I'm trying to do this for you. Now, let me tell you, with the next level, what you was able, just barely able to get over with on this level, and you asking God to take you somewhere, you better learn how to master the stuff that you are given and stop trying to be fickle and hide and learn how to face the devil when you're home, on your job, wherever you are, and plead the blood of Jesus over your circumstances. The devil made me do it. Oh, the devil. Oh, we give the devil too much credit. We use that as an excuse to cover up our shortcomings. To cover up what we're too fickle, what we're too afraid to do. As long as we got God on our side, y'all know we are forced to be reckoned with. We are forced to be reckoned with. As long, the scripture says it this way, if God be for us, who can be against us? God is all powerful. He's all-knowing. Guess what? He knows the very hairs on your head by number. He knows them individually. And I got to ask you, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Now, 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 now there, there are many times that the devil could have destroyed us. We've all been through situations and circumstances. Maybe not physically destroy you, but mentally destroy you. There are many circumstances where every day we go through something that we feed into it enough to take us out of here. That's why sometimes, you know, Jesus, he had to get away from everybody. Because guess what? When you really need to get through to God, you can't be with the crowd. So that's why sometimes you find Jesus, even when he went in the garden, and said he would find the place he would go out by himself. And even though he would have Peter, James, and John, namely, they would go places with him. But when he would go into the garden, he would say, y'all stay right here while I go in and pray. Why is it? That when we're trying to do for God, go for God, we feel like we got to bring everybody and their mama and their daddy and, and their cousin and, and all of them person with them. When, you, when I come to God, I just want to come to God for myself. I got enough problem I got to deal with for myself. I got enough answer that I got to get to God for myself. I ain't got time for you to be in my ear while you going down to that church. I ain't got time for you to be in my ear. You on your knees again praying, calling on God. He answered you the last time you think that he going to answer you now. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. God going to take care of his. So day by day, step by step, we are being ordered by God. 
And you know, some folk don't like it. Some folk, some folk look and they say, man, how are you making it? How are you doing it? Everything that you've been through, man, you should be somewhere locked up with a straight jacket on right now, rocking up like you cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. You said, that's what you should be doing right now. You say, I don't know. I'm just being guided by God. I'm just being guided by God. And it seems like every time the devil sets up a trap or a snare, God uses it for my benefit. Y'all know he did that for Job. And at the end of his story, Job said, hey, what he meant for evil, God meant for good. I don't know about y'all, but have any of y'all ever faced a situation in your life where the devil has set up a circumstance to try and take you out or to try and take you down to damage your reputation, to damage your character, to damage your name? But the very thing that the devil has set up to destroy you or take it out, God used it as a stepping stone. Any of y'all ever heard the story of the golden well? They thought they was going to bury this goat, and they took that old goat, that old man, he was tired of that goat. And he took the goat out there, and he threw him in an old well, and they thought they was going to bury the goat. So they just started taking dirt and throwing it in there on top of the goat. And, man, they thought that the thing was going to be buried, not knowing that every time they throw some dirt in there, the goat would just trample it under his feet. Throw some more in there the day, he just trample it under his feet. And after a while, when they thought he was going to be buried, he just rolls out on the top. You got to learn how to take the bad situation in this life and just trample them under your feet. Take those negative circumstances and just trample them under your feet because just like from the ashes, I rise. I rise as long as I am being guided by God. Now the problem comes when I try to guide myself. Your GPS can't pick up the problems of this life. Your, 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 as smart as your phone is, it might be smarter than we are, but guess what? Your phone just can't pick up when your next tribulation or your next trouble is coming. Guess what? But God knows. We serve a God that is so powerful. God sees problems coming a week or two weeks ahead of time. And God has already went over and fixed stuff so that we would be able to handle it. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Looking out for you. Things that you don't even notice. God is protecting you and he's caring for you. Now we see he said, God, guide me over. The song, the song goes like this. It says, it says guide me, O thou great Jehovah, through, through this barren, troubled land. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. It, it's, kind, it's kind of like speaking to a person that's, that's going through a life and they don't know in which direction they're supposed to go. Any of y'all ever felt like that? You, you, ever, you ever come to a place in your life where you just had to say, God, help me. What am I doing? What am I doing here? Uh, uh, is, is this a joke? Is this funny to you? Do you, get some, do you get some kind of joy out of this? Do you get a kick out of this? I've been trusting in you. I've been depending on you. I've been asking you. I've been praying to you. And it seems like you have just brought me to this place to just leave me off to myself. Lord, I need guidance. Lord, I need direction. What am I going to do? Guide me, oh, thou, thou, great Jehovah, through this barren land. Because y'all know, this is, we're just pilgrims in a strange land. Y'all know that, right? Yeah, even though you got an address here, this world is not your home. You're just a sojourner and a pilgrim passing through this barren land, trying to get to the, the home that is far, far away. So, so even though, even though we, have, we have dark nights, and even though you are a Christian, that does not mean that you won't have dark nights in your life. We're all going to experience some dark nights. You just know that as a child of God, you know who to turn to when the darkness comes, when the trouble comes. When the test comes, and they will come, you know who to look to. You know who to search. You know who to seek when you're going through those troubles in your life. And, and, and all of us at this moment in our life, it, even though you might be out of work right now, even though tr situations aren't what you, what you want, even though you don't know, man, if, if I'm going to have a job when I go back, how am I going to pay this, how am I going to pay that, you can praise God because he has guided you. Preacher, what do you mean that he has guided me? He ain't let you catch Corona? Well, I can say that for most of us. He, 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 ain't let you, <laughs> he, he ain't let you catch Corona. He's been protecting you. What do you mean, preacher, he's been guiding me? You've been off this whole time. God been providing food for you. Oh, oh that's a blessing in and of itself. You've you been off all this time. Guess what? When you turn your light switch up, don't it come on? Don't the lights come on? You got something that you can praise God for. In spite of. We can thank him. So we ought to thank God for every trip. Thank God for every hurdle. 
Thank God for every setback. Thank God for every moment where you just had to be like, Lord, I don't know. Then you got to thank him for the good times. Thank God for every blessed moment that you've ever had in your life, for every hill that God has ever brought you over, for every valley that he has ever brought you through. You can thank him because the steps of a good man have been ordered by God. Those men, those men come, come looking for the baby Jesus. They're looking, they're looking for the Messiah. They didn't know how to find him. They were guided by God to the place where he was. And we don't know where we're supposed to go. We're, we're praying and, and we're hoping for God. Lord, I want you to take me to the next level. Lord, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Lord, I'm looking for a new job. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want that. You don't know how to get it. You got to be guided by God. So when we get to the point that we understand that your getting up is ordered by God. Your laying down at night has been ordered by God. Your, your, your getting up, your laying down, everything you do, it has already been ordered by God. So even in the middle of a world crisis, you can walk around with a smile on your face. You can walk around with your head held down and a praise on your lips because your steps have been ordered by God. Y'all remember the songs that, Order my steps in your word. Dear Lord, lead me. Guide me every day. Y'all know we, we just like Ray Charles around here. We don't, we don't know where we're going. We don't know, we don't know what, what, what is around us. We don't know our direction. That's why we need God to guide us. That's why I'm so glad, Brother Elder Denson, that he didn't leave the keys to this ship to none of us. Because we don't know the direction. We don't know where to go. That's why the other song said, "Tis the old ship of Zion. Get on board. And one verse that says that Jesus is the captain. And as long as he is the captain, you can expect and know that you will always arrive safely at your destination. Because he's leading the ship. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be on that ship. I want to stay in this ship. Because guess what? I know that if I stick in with Jesus, as long as I'm with him, guess what? He's going to be with me. And even at a time when I wasn't with him, guess what? He was still looking out for me. He was still right there. And, 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 and ain't that just like a parent? Even though the child out there acting like you ain't raised him right. Love is still there. Love is still there. Lock him up. Guess what? I'm going to get my baby. That's my child. And that's, that, that's God. That's God right there looking out for us, loving on us caring for us. See you going to a place. There's a dead end down at the end of the road. Now, you've already been down this road ten times, and you already know that it's a dead end at the end of the road. I don't know why I'm having to tell you this again, but guess what? I'm going to tell you again, and I'm going to give you another chance. Let's try it again. You ain't saying amen because there's some of us sometimes. You, you, you ever had a schizophrenic moment? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like y'all don't know what schizophrenia is. Schizophrenia is when you keep on doing the same thing and you don't learn from it. Even a child, one of your babies back there checking, if they was to touch a stove, all they had to do was touch it one time. I can hear Chloe now. Next time she see it, uh-uh, that's hot. Because she learned from the last time that, uh-uh, you don't touch that, that's going to cause you pain. So why is it that us sometimes grown intelligent beings can't learn? from some of the things that we've been through. You already know what the relationship ended up last time. Why are you going to take yourself back through that same thing again? You already know the friendship that you got. You already know they they not for your benefit. They only where they can get out. You already knew what you learned the last time. Why are you going to put yourself through that trouble again? But sometimes we just put just go through the motions of life and going through the same thing and we're asking God to deliver us and Lord I'm tired of this well apparently we aren't too tired because we just keep finding ourselves going back to the same thing so apparently there's something going on upstairs that we first of all got to get right because can I tell you I don't care what problem issue trouble you got in your life the problem is right here and until we can get this right nothing else in our life will be right Man, I can want my feet to go out that door all I want to, but until my mind say, you're going to that door, guess what? I ain't going nowhere. It's a mind thing. You got to get your mind in process. You want to be all in with God? You got to, first of all, have your mind all in if you really want to be all in with God. God is a guide. He's a shepherd. Not just a shepherd, but he's called the good shepherd. 
And just like any shepherd, he cares about his flock. And can I tell you, God cares about you today. He cares about you so much that before the foundations of this world were ever formed, you were on his mind. And he was thinking about you. He was concerned about you. Loved us so much that when he saw us in need of saving, in need of salvation, that he himself came down to be a savior for mankind. He came down and gave his life as a ransom for many so that we, that we remain faithful to him, one day we might inherit that home far, far away that he's went away to prepare for us. And can I tell you, this time right now that we're going through, sad but true, is something that a lot of people needed just to draw them just a little bit closer to God. Sometimes, you know, we get a little bit too big for ourselves and we feel like we Superman and we Superwoman. And sometimes we encounter situations in this life that let us know, hey, man, you ain't as bad as you thought you was. You ain't, you ain't as strong as you thought you was. You're not as smart as you thought you was. And sometimes you just have to say, man, I don't know. I need to give this to God. And can I tell you, you give it to God, you're giving it to the right person. Because this is not somebody that can, that can just hear about the problem. It's somebody that can do something about the issues that we have going on in this life. And sometimes, you know, we're going through problems and we're going to hear, oh, brother, this and I got this going on. Oh, sister, I got this going on. Oh, I got this going on. And everybody you done told can't help you with nothing that you got going on. What's the song we sang? Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Say, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely break. take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. So you say, man, man this is a, a supposed to be a message of hope. I got some hope for you today. You don't know where you're going, but the steps of a good man have been ordered by God. And even during the middle of a crisis like we have going on right now, as a child of God, you can rest assured that God is going to take care of you. He's going to lead you. And he's going to guide you until we get out of this storm. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. I pray today that something has been said that will encourage you. I pray that something has been said that will lift you up. And whoever you are, wherever you are, I want you to know that God is thinking about you. That God cares about you. That when you were asleep last night, you were on God's mind. You weren't just on his mind, but guess what? He sat by your bedside all last night. Make sure death didn't touch you. Made that, make sure that made old death behave. Somebody said the old saying, so I'm glad that the sheets that I slept on last night were my widening sheets. And the bed that I laid on was my cooling board. We got something that I know that that might be just a little bit too old. And I, and I didn't know nothing about it. I just heard somebody say it. You know what? Well, we can be faithful because he's looking out for us. And he's looking out for you. And this is an invitation to you, my brother, my sister, my friend that is watching this right now. Even in your sinful state, he's thinking about you. Even in your wayward state, he's looking out for you. You may not even know him, but guess what? He knows everything about you. Before you were ever formed in your mind, your mom and daddy didn't get the first look at you. You were in his mind before you were ever formed. He's concerned about you. More importantly, he's concerned about your soul. Scripture says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's not willing that you should be lost in your current condition. But every day of your life, every moment, every second that you live, it is only God saying, all right, just a little bit more time. Just another chance. Just another opportunity. One of these days, you don't know when, you just might run out of opportunities. So while you're living in this present moment, while you, 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 you're yet living right now, say, for God I live, and for God I'm willing to die. Give yourself to Jesus. Hear his word. Believe the same. Repent of your sins. Confess him as your Savior. Give your life fully by being baptized for the remission of your sins. Have them washed away, done away with, never to rise against you in this life and neither the life that is to come. Whoever you are, maybe you're not even in this city, in this area. Guess what? We know people from here to Timbuktu, and wherever you are, we'll find somebody today that can help you get your soul saved. If you're standing in the need of prayer, we ask as always that you would, if you can, 
comment in the sections, your prayer requests. If you do not feel like making your prayer request public, we ask that you would message us and let us know the concerns and the thoughts of your mind. Because guess what? I, I don't know if you recognize it or not, but prayer does change things. Prayer does change things. Guess what? Your, your prayer might not get answered tomorrow. But in due time, God will always, he will honor your request. He will grant your request, and God will show up right in the nick of time.